We're talking about state of the innovation. You guys might have heard of the state of the union from the US when the president is talking to the Congress and telling about what is going on economically in the country and everybody is sitting in front of the TV. We want to do exactly that right now, but not talking about the US, talking about the startup world from Germany to Europe, from uh, US to uh, China, so basically all around the world. And therefore, I have a really, really, really nice group of people brought together and I will love to introduce them to you and please give them a warm applause. First of all, Sarah Turner, CEO and co-founder of Angel Academy, Philip Rizla, former vice president, uh, former vice chancellor of the Federal Republic of Germany. <laughs> Nenad Marovac, founder, CEO and managing partner of DN Capital. And of course, Felix Haas, 10X Capital Group. Welcome, Esther. Actually, it's ladies first, sorry very much. This is, this is a lot of space for uh, the, the few of us. Welcome to the stage. No, this is yours. I've got one. Okay. Shall I sit next to you? And we've got one more. Okay. It's for you. For the cool. Felix have to share a, a mic. Maybe I already told your names and what you're doing. We'd maybe just, just start with you to, for a quicker introduction or brief introduction of what you are doing so everybody knows a little more than your name and the company. Well, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Sarah Turner. I'm the founder of an angel network based in the UK called Angel Academy. Um, we are uh, um, we're mainly female angels, a network of about 200 of us, and we're investing in women-founded and co-founded tech startups. We've got 20 companies that we've invested in so far. Um, very important to point out that angel investors are investing their own money, so we're not attached to a fund. We invest alongside funds, but um, we're, we're investing our own money. Philip, okay, it's like again, back in the days. I'm Philip, not anymore a politician but a chairman of a venture fund in Vietnam, as well as partner of an ESG fund in Frankfurt, London, New York, and Boston, and together with Felix, a sort of angel investor as well. You guys got a microphone over there? I got one. Should I go? Does this work? Hi, I'm Nanad Maribat. Um, I'm the founder of DN Capital and managing partner. We're an early stage venture fund focused on Europe and the US. Uh, we mostly invest in Europe and the UK, Germany and France and other countries, and, and also have an office in Silicon Valley. We've been very fortunate to have invested in Shazam, hence the socks. Uh, Chris did, forgot to give the plug, but we're the ones that didn't say no. Uh, and then also great companies like Auto One in Germany, Quandu, uh, home to go et cetera, and Torling. I did it the other way around. I once invested in socks. <laughs> how, did, how did that go? Uh, different topic. <laughs> Felix? We made 20x. Well, you uh, know me probably uh, from this morning, so not a big introduction, but um, I, I'm actually not supposed to be here on this panel because uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm representing 10X, uh, my investment company, with three partners, Jan, Robert, and Andreas, and we found out that they all have conflicting appointments today, so they sent me here on to represent 10X. And we are angel investors. We uh, love to invest early in, in entrepreneurs. We are invested in about 100 uh, startups. Um, we, we really love to back young entrepreneurs and help them on a the journey in the bad and, the, and in the good times. And we just also raised um, our first uh, fund. It's a private equity fund, uh, but we will talk about it in the future, uh, in the very near, near future. Let's dive right into it. Maybe you guys can say from your point of view, where you guys are coming from, what are the most interesting opportunities considering ventures in Europe right now? I think uh, obviously the, the obvious ones are AI and machine learning, but also we're big believers in marketplaces and SaaS companies. Uh, and also RPA, so rob robotic programmable automation. Uh, companies uh, like um, Leapwork out of Denmark, which is in the same space as UiPath. UiPath, by the way, I don't know if people know this company. This is a company started in Romania, which is now one of the most valuable companies in Europe. It, it raised money its last round at over seven billion. So we're big believers that great companies can come out of any country in Europe, doesn't matter whether it's Germany or small countries like Estonia where Skype came out and now Romania. So we look, at, we look everywhere. Now, I would say that uh, you know, innovation is certainly are driven by markets, and markets today are driven at least from three major trends. First is sort of no-brainer, digitalization. Second, I would say it's sustainability. We have even seen it here this morning on stage. And the third is, from my point of view, politics and geopolitics. So we see due to politics and geopolitics a shift of the different markets. See there's a conflict between China and US. What does it mean for ASEAN and for the ASEAN markets? For the startup entrepreneurs there, what does it mean for Europe? I think that's quite interesting. So these are the three major trends. 
Is there anything to add from? So um, I just wanted to add a, um, a gender perspective to that because that's <laughs> where I'm coming from. So we're looking at exactly the same technologies as the guys, but we're investing in women who are building those technologies. And sometimes we hire and they have different values and different insights, but um, there's a huge opportunity to uh, be an investor as a woman and also to invest in women who've typically been underfunded in the ecosystem. So I think there's huge growth market there. Are there certain, um, let's say, areas where you invest right now, where you say it's interesting what's coming up there? So we're looking at AI and machine learning companies. We're seeing a lot of great female founders being building businesses at the intersection of life sciences and machine learning, so diagnostic tools. Um, we're looking at a clean meat company founded by two female scientists. Um, so the similar sort of technology areas as the, as the guys, but somehow find it harder to get their message across, get in front of investors and close the investment. Is that still such a big, I mean, maybe it's my age that I'm well, differently educated or differently, yeah. because I would say I don't care if it's whether man or woman. Well, we, we all say that, but I think unfortunately we all have hardwired biases. And so this is part of the reason why I think it's so important to have women investing as well, because they will be maybe more attuned to how women communicate and the types of w businesses that women are building. So, um, <laughs> thank you. Um, women in the UK own half the net wealth now, but we're about eight or nine percent of angel investors, but you know, the barrier is not financial, it's social and cultural. So if we can mobilize that capital, it will benefit the whole founder community, not, not just women. Um, just, just on that point, I think three of the best investors in Europe are women. So Sonali and Luciana at Axel and Laurel at 83 North. So women are very good investors in Europe. So let's not you know, undermine that by any means. But, but is it, as you guys are, Whenever you guys want. Uh, <laughs> uh, as you guys are traveling, actually, the world, it's not like you're only having a look on Europe. Is there a difference when you come to China, for instance, to the US, to Europe, if we compare these three, let's say, worlds, even though it's all one? So I'm quite often, certainly in Vietnam now, and so the entrepreneurs are, I would say, more early stage than we are here, but they are also focusing on technology, so they really literally can leapfrog the developments. They are also focused on AI, as well as big data and other things. And um, they are full of opportunities and hope, because they do see what happens now in the world, and they s do see that there's maybe an opportunity for their region, for their country. Honestly, they're still producing and focusing more and more on the US American market. So even though they're based in East Asia, the basis for the customer, for the market, that's more or less more and more the United States. So this okay. is uh, funny because they have enough people there as well, even more than in the US, but they are still the main driver. I think, go to, um, as the Bits and Bretzels guy, of course, I have the Munich hat on. So I have to say that, that we see a lot of amazing startups, a lot of amazing entrepreneurs now based in Munich and here in the Bavarian region. And the big difference, um, to what, what we saw um, a few years ago is that we not only have the great technology here and the great inventions and the great uh, technologies coming out of the TU and, and, and LMU and the other, um, other um, unis, but we also now see A, the ambition of us and the fellow entrepreneurs here based here to build a truly big global company and we see that reflected in the ability to attract significant funding. So we see the companies that raise 20, 30, 50, 100 million now being in Munich. And second, we see this mindset of, 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 of the founders also here now to be in Bavaria, but to, uh, so to have the roots in Bavaria, uh, but to expand internationally and to build truly big companies. And I think that's a very um, interesting and cool inflection point in time. Now to be in Munich, to work on, as, as we said this morning, on meaningful things that likely involve technology, because they have the potential to become really, really big. And I'm really sure that next year's we will see maybe a dozen or so um, unicorns coming out of Munich. Just, just on the geographic. <laughs> You know, uh, I hate to mention the B word, but you, you kind of have to talk about this today. But I think since, since Brexit, and also I'd actually say since 2012, we see more and more amazing companies coming out of Germany. 
So Flixbus, Auto One, Home to Go, stuff like this. And I think that you know when we talk to entrepreneurs, especially developers that are coming out of Eastern Europe and, and places like that, you know, less and less of them want to go to London right now. So we see Germany and, and Berlin and Munich having an advantage to take the number one position okay. in Europe. And uh, you know, I think that's a pretty big change. Uh, I've been in venture for 25 years. In the beginning, it was all about London. That's now changed. I mean, Berlin 10 years ago was nothing. But look at the stuff that Lukash, Gadowski, and Oliver Samwar, yourself, Felix, and a bunch of other people in the room have done in, in Berlin. It's an amazing transformation. We're also starting to see that in France right now. Macron and, and the new initiatives, we're seeing a lot of great companies come out of France, and also Spain. Spain, uh, you know, next week is the South Summit. That's almost as big as this event. Uh, and we're starting to see more and more. There's already two unicorns come out of Spain, so Glovo and Cabify. And so there are just more and more things coming outside of the mainstream London. So we think that's a really interesting opportunity. You, you guys as investors, because we talked about AI, we talked about sustainability and all that, how big do you think is your responsibility to push people who are getting to a point where they say, I want to have money for sustainable goods, I want to have money for better technologies and all that. Is that a topic that uh, is going with you to bed at night and you're standing up like, where is that one big case? Maybe sitting in that audience right now? So um, I prefer to look at the question a little bit differently. Okay. And can we generate great returns for investors? and have sustainability and achieve societal impact? And then the answer is definitely yes. So rather than telling people what to invest in, we've got to convince people that these are investable businesses and they will generate great returns as well, as well as social returns. Because it's possible yeah. to, do, to get and money out of uh, yeah. businesses like that. There was because that is something I think no, nobody is uh, talking about yet. There was a very nice quote by President Obama this morning. He said, and that, uh, that um, stuck in my head, he said, there should be no difference between uh, doing good and, and or being good and being well. No, what was it? Between, doing, between well doing, good. doing well and doing good, that is it. Um, and that's, I think, well, well phrased. Yeah? Um, of course, obviously, investments shall have a return. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So that's, that's, that's the system well, we, 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 run out of money, we live in. Don't we? But the there's so many opportunities to do great things. Either, so. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. We ran out of money. That's a word I don't well, like. Well, if, if, if we don't get a return on our investment, then there's no more money okay. to invest. So I saw you yeah. personally. Yeah. No. Per personally and funds do as well. <laughs> like because I'm, I'm like uh, socks. Like socks, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> don't invest in socks. <laughs> don't do don't shoes. Don't shoes. Do socks. <laughs> or shoes. Or shoes. <laughs> but, but, but Shazam, for instance, I mean, you guys do socks, it seems to run pretty well. Yeah, this is a pair Chris gave us all at the Christmas party at the, one of the board meetings a couple of years ago. But but anyway. You still got them. That's good. So sustainability, yeah. actually, sustainability the even in your private life? <laughs> what? Sustainability in your private absolutely, life? Absolutely, absolutely. Keep, keeping them. But coming on to the social responsibility point, I think we all, when we make investment decisions, obviously if there's obvious things that are not right, we will uh, avoid those companies. But our job is, is first and foremost to make a return to our investors. But I think as a community, you know, some of us and a lot of us in the room have done very well out of the sector, and we can do more individually to give back. And I think that's where it can have more of an effect. Uh, and, and, you know, I think Obama's words this morning was worth me getting up at four in the morning to fly here. Uh, because, but it, it's something we all need to think about. A lot of people have done very well in the room. It's not just about having a bigger car, a bigger house. It's about giving back. And if we don't get involved, like he said, some things can happen. We've seen it happen in lots of other places in the world. And we're not immune to that. Uh, the French definitely understand that. If, if we would say we give every... <laughs> no, absolutely right. It just feels weird to sit up front and, and applaud too. Um, if we would say there is a voice to every country where you guys invest, what would be the, the European vo voice of, of uh, the startup scene? Is there something like that characteristically different to, to other areas in the world where you'd say, this is typical Europe? I, I think we have a challenge in Europe having a single voice. It's quite still a very complex and fragmented market. And I think that's why we lose lots of startups to the US because it's easier to raise capital there. It's easier to find customers. So I think that's something we really got to come together with in Europe and sort out a single market for services right. because that will make a local market much more feasible. A European for a one, yeah. A yeah. European one, yes. I would agree with that. I would say each country is unique, but I think, which is why it's so important, uh, if you're competing against China and the US, Europe working together, 
and not trying to build our borders and, and stupid things like Brexit uh, are going to help us compete. Yeah. Hope I'm not going to get attacked by the Brexiters now. You're still based in London, right? It's so outside. Yeah. Good luck, my friend. <laughs> good luck. Hey, go. <laughs> Already flew in German, so here it comes. Yeah, yeah. No, I wanted to say maybe that, you know, something typical, at least for Germany, is if we talk about the next step in the Internet, Internet of Things, I think that is a huge advantage for Europe, maybe particularly for Germany, because we have a small means of enterprises, very strong, industrialized Mittelstand. And they have the opportunity now to digitalize and then to fill this gap of Internet of Things. And I think they can do it better than many other regions in the world because they're very strong in classical industry as of today. So that could be an opportunity. And second, come back to the question of sustainability. If they use the digital opportunities, not only in order to improve the efficiency of classical business models, but supporting newer business models, sustainable business models, I think then it's a real great opportunity, not only for business in Europe, in Germany, but also for society. What do you guys think can regulators do to lift up the startup scene as such? Because I think that's always a topic too. Hey guys, no, thank you so much. You're <laughs> okay, good. Philip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so first, talking about Europe, there's a EIB, European Investment Bank. So it's not that bad, it's pretty good. They have a lot of money and they have one specific purpose and goal that is to keep the European startups in Europe to open to them the market, to open to them the financial background, because as soon as we're talking about double digit million in funding, so then we are come into challenges, still here in Germany particularly. So I think they try to fill this gap as well. So there's a lot of ongoing stuff here in Europe. It's not that bad. And second, what can regulators do as well? I think if we talk with the startups as well, to connect them with the rest of the world. So what we did in the past, we made our first trip when I was minister. It was a nice trip, but it was not only a nice trip, but it was in order to highlight the German opportunities to the venture funds in the Silicon Valley, because most of the money is still going to Silicon Valley or Shenzhen. And I think the guys here are as good as the colleagues in San Francisco or wherever, and as creative, and it, therefore, they are worse to have some investment as well. So regulators can do quite a lot. They can support the investment. They can create the legal framework and they can increase the horizon of investments and help for the reach out of the German or European startups. Yeah, I would, I would add to that. I think uh, without the European uh, Investment Fund, EIF, which you mentioned, I, I think the European venture community probably wouldn't exist today in some ways because a lot of funds uh, in the early days had a lot of trouble raising money. And now, because they've gotten good returns, because the market's developed, uh, I think they're able to raise without EIF or, or, or reduce them uh, tremendously. But obviously, we heard this morning uh, from Obama, it's, it's absolutely critical to have the rule of law, contracts, and also, you know, maybe some tax incentives and also option incentives for entrepreneurs like you guys to take the risk because, uh, you know, you guys are leaving great jobs to, to, to take a risk where you could work for, you know, four or five years and get nothing. And so if you do get something, we want to make sure it's tax, uh, you know, advantageous, not avoiding tax, but making sure it's, uh, it's, uh, it's interesting. So I think there are things pe the, the government can do. Mm -hmm. And actually, in the, in the UK, we've done a fairly good job of that. So great tax incentives for, for entrepreneurs, but also for investors, which has really stimulated a, an early stage investment community. And, and it would be great for those tax breaks to be deployed across Europe. And maybe the question of, of qualified migration is a topic as well. So in the fund, I'm working in Frankfurt. So I think we are 12 people based in Frankfurt. And among them, there are only two, two Germans. And I'm looking not even really German, a little bit Asian, right? So, and, and if we open the discussion about migration, qualified migration, skills workforce, I think this is where politics can do quite a lot, seriously. Perfect. Good. Guys, thank you very much. Thanks for your applause. Thank you for your time. Thanks for being here. And enjoy the rest of Bits and Pretzels. Have a beer or two. And uh, the same for you. See you later. Cheers. Thank you. Well done.